We've got something different with today's two guests. Yeah. Uh, it's been great with both our guests so far. They both had international experience, uh, albeit with Parky right at the start of his international career. Uh, I wanted to provide a slightly different perspective. So I've got two of my current Yorkshire uh, teammates who are more towards the start of their professional careers at the moment. Also, with the episodes previously being dominated by talking about leg spin, uh, it's really good to have something different here and have two finger spinners on as guests. So we've got James Logan, who's a left arm spinner, who got four for 22 in only his second first class appearance last year. And he also topped the averages in division one for county championship last year for bowling. And we've got Jack Shutt, who's an off spinner, who uh, came through in T20 and did really well last year, with the highlights being making his debut in front of a full house in the Roses game at Headingley, and then taking 5 for 11 against Durham. So welcome to the show, lads. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, mate. Yeah, good to have you here, good to have you here. So, uh, like with everyone else, we're just going to start right at the beginning of your career. So... You know, how did uh, starting with you, Logie? Like, how did you get into bowling, spin, and yeah, you know, how did it um, develop as you're younger? Yeah, so I don't really come from much of a cricketing family. Um, so first experience of cricket were like following my older brother down to a local cricket club. It's just like 20 yards down lane, and yeah, just started there. Started as a seamer, trying to bowl as quick as I could. Um, more of a batter when I was younger. Um, did that till I was about, bold seam until I was about 11, always more of a batter. And then when I was in Yorkshire set up, 112s, one scoring runs, got dropped down to the B team, who didn't have a spinner. So then, yeah, I just thought, try to turn my arm over, try to bowl a few, and came out all right, so I went from there. Yeah, I think that's definitely something we had so far as people bowling spin, because there's no one else who could do it. So I guess show good initiative and then also changing from seam to spin has been a common theme. What about you, Shati? Uh, yeah, pretty much the same, to be honest. Just a bit of a, a failed seamer. Um, when I was sort of 10, 11, I used to bowl seam and then I remember one day just messing about in the nets. I think I was trying to copy uh, Graham Swan's action with like a wind ball. Um, and then one of my coaches at the time, he just, um, he said, well, why don't you try and do that? Um, with a cricket ball because you're not really any good at bowling team. So, yeah, I did that and then it kind of stuck. So, uh, yeah, pretty similar to Logie, really. Nice. Probably not the worst person to copy of uh, Graham Swan. But, OK, so getting into more uh, technical stuff, had a couple of questions already asking about different grips for spinners. So, I just wondered, like, it might be hard to describe, you know, over audio on a podcast, but... You know, what's your basic grip for your uh, stock delivery, starting with Logie again? Yeah, so my grip is quite wide. Um, just try and split my two fingers quite wide on the ball. And then a big one for me is just like resting my thumb on it, not actually like really gripping it tightly with my thumb. Because that can, I think if I do, do that, then I end up dragging a few down or so if I try and spin it harder. Uh, yeah, so I just try, but I do quite, I think I have quite a wider grip than like a traditional off spinner's grip. But yeah, it's just what feels comfortable to me. It's it's something that I've never really like tried to play around with that much because if I do, it just doesn't feel right. Like I think grip can be like, it's a lot about what feels natural to you. Definitely. I think that's very good advice. What about you, Shatstar? Yeah, um... Mine's wide as well. It's sort of the like the front of the index finger and then the, the middle finger. I try and go off the middle um, like knuckle kind of bit. Um, and I, it's really quite a wide, tight grip. Um, I'd say that that's the one thing that throughout like since being about 15, 16 that I would never touch because I feel like if, if I do change my grip at all, like I just feel like a different bowler. Um, and I think for me as well, like it's emphasised when it's like if it's raining, if it's a bit wet or like I get a bit, if I've got sweaty hands indoors, like it doesn't feel quite right. Like I'm quite reliant on on gripping the ball tightly and that grip. So it's not something that I would, uh, I'd ever change really. Yeah, I think, I think whenever a spinner tries a different grip, it definitely feels very different, doesn't it? And um, for both of you, like as finger spinners, do you have like, technical cues that you really try and concentrate or work on quite a lot? 
Uh, my main one, technical wise, has always been based around like trying to stay tall. Um, for many reasons, really, I think if taller you are, and stated point of delivery, more spin you're going to get, more overspin and stuff like that. Um, and from me changing from a seamer to a spinner, that I struggled with that at first. Um, like a seamer's action, but bowling spin. So I think over years, like working on technical stuff, mainly in the winter, like. I've ironed out that sort of stuff and now I've got like quite a just a standard spinners action obviously still working hard at it but like from what my action was it's come a long way really yeah um for me when I was younger it were quite a lot of like alignment stuff um so I used to be quite closed off in my stance um when I was bowling so putting stress on your back and that sort of thing so I think gradually as you get a little bit stronger um, and it, like I grew a little bit as well it becomes easier to be more aligned when you've got that strength rather than having to sort of find the pace from places that you don't want to find it from so definitely when I was younger it was sort of alignment and then more towards now um, most of my drills are towards spending a bit more time on my back foot in my delivery stride just to have to spend that time in the crease um, if you're spending time in the crease, that's how you can generate the most energy on the ball, in, in my case. Um, so, yeah, just back foot drills, really. Nice. And then uh, with the leg spinners on, we've had on so far, they've spoken a lot about different variations they have. Like, you know, as, as finger spinners, what are your main variations? Uh, for me, it's always been an arm ball that I try ball seam up. Um, yeah. How do you I ball think, that? Um, so, I just try and rest my... This finger, I don't know what that finger's called. Index finger? Yeah, index the finger. The so one I, you get given out with index finger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I try I try to rest that like straight down the seam. Um, don't really use the rest of my fingers. Um, thumb on one side of the ball, but don't grip it too tight. And then I just try and let it come off the index finger. Um, but it's actually like, it's not easy because if you like, don't come off right then it won't come off come down seam up and it won't swing so I think that's something that I've really had to like work on perfecting over the years I actually used to swing it more when I was younger uh, not sure if that's due to the balls we used to use but yeah uh, yeah for me as well like I'm not going to repeat what Logie said but it's just the, the arm ball um, pretty much the same part from I have my thumb off the ball um, but in addition to that, I think when you're a finger spinner, you're not going to have loads of different variations. Like it's very difficult to bowl a doozra like without throwing it. So I think for any young spinner, I think the main sort of variations have got to be with your pace and and your areas really. Um, especially in white ball cricket as well. Um, I've found this year that you get a little bit one pace um, throughout your over in a T20 game. They just sort of line you up and then it goes. So. Um, yeah, definitely just keep changing your, your areas up, especially in white ball cricket. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that later, Shotty, but we'll go there now. Like, so I think one thing that was really impressive watching you the back end of last year was how you came in straight away and changed your pace. Like, you know, what, what kind of things inform the decision about like what pace you're going to bowl for each ball? Uh, just sort of, I think you get sort of a gut feeling of where they're trying to, to hit you. So, you kind of, I mean, I remember you sent me a little bit of background on each of the batters last year, which was really good of you uh, before the before the Lance game. And you kind of have an idea of where they're sort of, they're trying to hit it. So then once you kind of know where their strengths are and what they've done so far in the over, you kind of get a bit of a feel of what they're trying to do. And maybe it's going a little bit slower and a little bit straighter so that they're trying to sort of fetch it. Um, but yeah, I think, especially in T20 cricket, it's just, it's it's more of a it's like a battle between you and the batter like trying to outthink each other I don't think there's like a set formula of like well that would be a good ball like slow and wide would be good or slow and straight I think it's the ball is like it's got to be um it's hard to describe but based on kind of a, just the feeling that you get really yeah I think that's interesting and people speak speak about like going with their gut your gut's actually informed by like your past experiences and like things you've seen. So 
although it might feel like it's a bit you know going on tuition like that intuition actually comes from a lot of knowledge and experience that you have and like will you will you change your lineup quite a bit as well in t20 yeah um line as well it depends if it's spinning or not really um to some extent because you can get away with going a little bit wider as a off spinner to a right hander if it's spinning um but quite often if it's really flat and there's nothing in it i generally go straighter um because there's less options for them to score if it's a little straighter and then as a variation a little bit wider because obviously you can't you can't just keep landing the ball in the same spot but um yeah it's very dependent on the and as well, another one is the, is the dimensions of the ground as well. So there's some games you rock up and then there's like there's a 50 yard boundary one side and you and suddenly you're having to bowl eight stumps so that you don't get you don't get it to cow like every every ball. So it's yeah. interesting. Will you change up like over and round as well? Yeah, yeah, I do that quite a lot. Um, I'm not sure. I, can, I remember watching some kind of master class and they were like the amount of difference like in the trajectory from over to round, like there's a few feet like difference. So like obviously anything that you can get, especially when you're a finger spinner and you've not got a load of variations, any variation you can create with your angle is definitely going to be beneficial. Yeah, and then uh, with you, Logie, you uh, had some really good success in Red Bull so far in your career. Like what's your mindset towards Red Bull? Like do you have a a kind of stock approach that you have to each game or each innings or you know what's how do you go about it yeah i think my approach always to red ball games is i try and be as consistent as i can um like build it around like bowling dot balls building pressure and i think whatever form of cricket you play in whatever standard you play in that's always going to be quite a good plan like but as if you're being consistent batters are always going to get bored um and that's you can get pick up a lot of wickets from doing that so yeah just firstly uh, like my general thought is just to try and bowl every ball my best ball and just be consistent like ball maidens really challenge yourself on bowling maidens so that's yeah that's a big thing for me yeah i think that's spot on i think like end of the day the, the main game is like staying on the, the longer you bowl the more likely you are to get wickets so i think for any spinner if you can have that consistency and control especially in red ball that's your way into the game like you're never going to get taken off really if you're going yeah. after an over i think like over. yeah when you start like it's big when you start in a spell because all you want when you start in a spell is like to get another over and then when you settle into your spell then you can start thinking about like oh how am i going to work this better out what fields can i set like you can start thinking more like that but firstly when i come on i'm always like all right let's just ball let's just be consistent ball dot balls a bit of pressure yeah I guess for any spinners out there finding a way to start your spell is really important right like it might be different in terms of your field or how you bowl but you've got to find a way to get into the game yeah definitely um talking a bit more about like the kind of setup we've got at Yorkshire or your own careers you know so far you know who's helped you in your career so far and you know who who helps you at the moment like who are people you, you speak to about your bowling yeah, well, it's always been coaches I've worked with mostly. I introduced and Richard Dams, both who watched, well, academy coaches when I first came into Yorkshire, like set up when I was 16. But then another good one for me was when I was 16, um, I think with all the England and the 19 call ups, like Carl Carver got called up. I got drafted into the second team when I probably wasn't really ready when I was 16. Um, I was still very raw um but Richard Dawson was um the twos coach there and I just remember like I didn't really have much idea of the tactical side of spin at all like the fields I should set or anything like I just used to bolt like just run up and bowl and I just remember having a few chats with him and he used to actually like well I think he just used to set my fields like from <laughs> from like side at pitch um he would, and I just remember chatting spin with him um, and it was really good actually. Yeah, like really enjoyed working with him. It was only for probably four or five games that season and then he moved on. But yeah, I just remember him having quite a big impact. Yeah, he's good. I did a little bit of him when I was around the line stuff and he's he's really knowledgeable, isn't he? And I like how he goes about uh, spin. What about for you, Shati? Uh, yeah, for me, um, 
early career, uh, there's a guy called Ian Swallow who um, plays at Elska, um, who basically taught me how to bowl spin. So like in the early part of my career, like he was the the main influence. And then, like Logie said, I've done um, done a lot of work with Damsey and Juzu, which obviously they've helped a lot. But just in addition to that, I think for any young spinner, you should try and talk to other spinners. So um, last year we had Kesha over for quite a while, Keshav Maharaj. Um, and he was like, it was class like to speak to. He's, I remember I went down and did 12th man at like, I think it was Essex. Um, and when we were batting, I just sat next to him and asked him a couple of questions. And like, he spoke to me for about 40, 45 minutes, just about like his processes and spin bowling. So yeah, there are any young lads listening to this to just pick the brains of any sort of senior players that they look up to and, and maybe take some of the stuff that they do into their own their own preparation their own game definitely I think that's a a massive motivation for this podcast actually is sharing some of those conversations because they can be so helpful so the more you can share that you know hopefully that'll help other spinners out there Uh, you both touched on Ian Jews there who's the uh, spin bowling coach at Yorkshire if anyone doesn't know I think he his technical knowledge in particular is outstanding and like I think whenever you ask him you know um Oh, you know, what do you think about my action at the moment? He always seems to be able to pick up the little things that we might feel. So I think his his eyes for bowling is is really good. But like you said, we are I think we are very lucky at Yorkshire. You know, you've got obviously got Juzy as spin coach, but then also you know Rich Pyre is the fast bowling coach. We know we can speak to him. Even if you just have chats with the other coaches like Frog, Gailey, PG, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people there. So I think for any spinners, like even if they're not a spin bowling specific coach, you can definitely have some really positive. Uh, conversations with other coaches and I think also another one of the best things about playing for Yorkshire is you know we've got some obviously really high class international players like Joe Root and Johnny Best and I think as well like bowling at them is something personally I found really helpful in terms of like asking you know how how you're tracking you know what your bowling's like maybe compared to bowls at international level is that something you found to be helpful as well? Yeah obviously there's a lot of world class players at Yorkshire so it's always good bowling it when you bowl at people like that, and then you can get feedback. Um, like they're obviously going to give you honest feedback, and it's just good to see where you're at, whether your pace is good, whether it's too slow to move up that level. So yeah, it's it's good working with all these world class players. Yeah, I'd I'd second that. Um, I think when you're bowling at somebody like, especially who's been a very good county player or has played for England. Um, and you can go down and say what's what's the pace like that sort of thing like they'll they will they'll say if it's too slow it's too slow and then you know like if you want to progress like it's got to be a bit quicker but I think as well like you, as a young spinner you should be thinking about what questions you ask them because I think I uh, I'm guilty quite a lot of the time of just saying sort of what's the pace like but I think in in reality like you actually want to know if the pace you're bowling like if it's still like going up and down, if it's still got that shape on it that you want to have on it. So like, I think be really specific when, you, when you're when you asking these guys, like what what's your pace like? Maybe adding things like, is there a lot on that? Like, is there energy on the ball? Or does that just feel like I'm a bit flat? Or you know, like there's more things that you can get from them. Definitely. And like, like I said, there's so much stuff, like, you know, talk about potential fields, you know, plans you might have, there's there's a lot you can you can get from bowling at batters. And I guess that goes for anyone, really. Uh, so moving into, uh, you know, reflecting on this winter that you guys had, you both went to Mumbai uh, for a spin camp. Just want to talk in quite a lot of detail about that and I guess what it was like as an experience, first of all, like off the field, you know, like was it something that was quite different going out there? Yeah, it was very different to anything I'd ever experienced before. Um, I'd only really been to South Africa to play cricket. Um, so yeah, it was very different. Um, and we got we got chance. Obviously, it was just me and Shutty, so it was it was good to like just be solely focused on bowling spin, being able to talk to each other every day, like ball with each other every day on spin friendly wickets. Um, and we got to work. Well, one coach in particular in particular called Hitsu. Um and I think you've worked with him and you've posed in the past uh he's very different um outlook on bowling spin really from 
a lot of English coaches. So it was just nice to get that different perspective, like different eyes looking at your action, what you thought of it and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really useful. I found that like a really good um, aspect for me was like getting my volumes up. So after I spoke to Kesh last year and he was telling me about how he like bowls, sometimes bowls 40 overs in a day in the winter. And I was just sat there thinking like my body had, it had breaking out if I tried bowling 40 overs in a day. Um, that was kind of a goal that I've set myself, like to get my, my body into a place where I can bowl like 20, 30 overs in a day without breaking down. And then I think that's when you sort of, you really like hone your skill when you're bowling that much. Like you, you get sort of a rhythm and like a feeling of your, of your own action. So while I was out there, I was just trying to up my workloads a lot and like bowl like a couple of hour spells, stuff like that. Um, I'm really sort of get that up. And obviously this, this coronavirus stuff has kind of uh, ruined that a little bit, but I, it's, it gave me a lot of confidence sort of that I can get my body into a place where it can bowl sort of maybe 80, 100 hours in a week and still be okay. Yeah, I think that's one of the best things about going out and to those training camps in Mumbai from my personal experience is being able to, you know, bowl those really long spells and, and bat against the net bowlers and stuff. So, uh, Logie, you touched on uh, hit you the coach. Like, what were the main differences between maybe the Indian style of coaching and the English style of coaching spin? Um, so, in England, it's always been based a lot around, like, alignment, um, like, staying tall, which is obviously oh, really useful. Uh, but once you get to that stage where you're nailing that sort of stuff, um, he hits who spoke about like use it, how you use your fingers, like how you like get strong fingers to help you spin it more. And you spoke a lot about wrist position, which is actually like what I came away from it, like wanting to work on the most, um, like how to get your wrist like in a place where it's going to come through and let you get overspin rather than just like undercutting it or side spinning it in my case. So yeah, that's something that I've, really tried to work on like when I've been bowling since I've got back from there um yeah and he was just like just a diff completely different outlook and he's a spinner himself um and it was just a completely different outlook than I'd ever heard before on spin and it were like refreshing yeah just on that like very similar like they are they're all about the wrist and spinning the ball hard like not so much alignment and I think we were on the sort of the hotel TVs, um, it was showing like the the Ranji Trophy and stuff on the TV, and you see some of the spinners there have got like pretty rogue actions. Like you'd look at it and you'd think like, what what what's that? But then it like comes down and it's got revs on it and it's in a good area. So it's like I think their school of thought over there is is more like Logie said about your about your wrist and your fingers and getting revs on the ball rather than having a nice like aligned action. Uh, so I quite I, I do subscribe to that school of thought, but I think there is still a place for for the English sort of style of thinking of being aligned in your in your delivery and stuff like that. It's probably a bit of a balance, isn't it? I guess that's why it's good having those different experiences, so you can work out what works for you and and how you want to uh, approach it. So in terms of actually the, the cricket in India, I know you played games and stuff like. How did you find the conditions? Like, did it mean that you went about anything in different ways, or? Um, the yeah, the games we played were actually on quite quite spicy wickets, spinning wickets. So it were nice. Um, it's it's some it's nice to like bowl like under that like when there's that expectation on you because you don't get it that much in England. Like mainly you'll play on like seamer friendly wickets, but when you do get that wicket that's spinning and everybody expects you to go through a team, it's like, it's that different sort of pressure. Um, so I think that like I found over, like in that situation, like in the past, I've put a bit too much pressure on myself when it's spinning, like, and like thinking, oh, everybody thinks I should bowl them out here, like, which in reality is probably not true. Um, so yeah, well, good just to play on a few spinning pitches, like, and see what you, like how it comes out when it's when you're getting a bit of help from the wicket. Yeah, um, in, in uh, over there, it was kind of like replicating what it might be like over here if you're playing on the spinning pitch in like third, fourth innings or again. And I think when you're outside in England, you don't really get those opportunities to practice that 
um, in a game situation until you're actually sort of thrown in to do it. So being out there and having that um, those conditions in an actual game situation where there is a bit of pressure on you to do it, I, I think that's that's a really positive thing about going away and and playing in those sort of conditions. And then uh, come, it's been brilliant, lads. So thanks a lot for coming on. But uh, coming towards the end of the interview, going to ask uh, each of you if you had one bit of on-field and one bit of off-field advice for a, a young spinner, what would it be? Uh, I think I, t- I touched on it earlier. Um, big one for me on-field is always being trying to be consistent, especially at the start of your spell, um, getting into the spell early. Um, getting yourself that one extra over. Um, so, yeah, on field, I do try to keep it quite like simple, like not too complicated in my thoughts. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'd say. Be consistent. Yeah, um, I'd echo that. But um, especially in club cricket as a young lad, I reckon you get quite a lot of um, people telling you how they think you should bowl like they might say you should be bowling slower like chucking it up or you should have all the, all the fielders up I, I think when you are a young lad and you're trying to find your way sort of in club cricket and men's cricket I think if you've got a clear plan of of what you want to do and if you've got set fields that you think you will bowl best to, whether that's as a at the start of your spell having a couple of men out and having a bit of protection I think stick by that and don't really be pressured by people um, telling you otherwise. Yeah, I think that's great advice, Shot. And I think, like, any, anything you decide, like, as long as you can justify why you're doing it, and hopefully your teammates or coaches will back you, okay? And then the hard question, I guess, what's the off field advice you've got? Uh, I think what I'd say for that one is bowling spin, there's always going to be days when you can, you can go distance, you can get whacked. Um, it's always going to happen to any spinner. So I just think when that happens, just try not to get too down about it, which I've been guilty of in my career because it can affect it can affect your like future performances, especially if you get yourself into a bit of a rut. I think you've just got to almost be like relaxed at the thought that sometimes it, you just not even if you bowl well, you can still go the distance. So yeah, just try not to get too caught up in that and just like trying to stay level with how you look at the game. Yeah, um, I'd just say, just sort of be curious, ask questions um, of anyone that's in in the similar position to you or senior to you, just ask them how they go about it. And then some of the stuff you'll use, like you, you might incorporate into your practice and your game and some of it you might think, well, that's rubbish, I'm not going to. But I think the more people you speak to about these things, um, the more knowledge you can get and the better off you're going to be for it. Brilliant. Right. um, Thanks a lot for coming on, lads. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Cheers, Poisy. Thanks a lot, Poisy.